part of the problem? Power lines still down throughout the area. Many of the power poles are damaged severely. The good news, we have seen power crews throughout the area, and they are going street by street trying to restore the electricity. What we have also seen, relief agencies. They are here providing food and water, and people in this community couldn't be more grateful. The comfort of a hot meal, a most basic need, served to hundreds who might otherwise go without. At the Cash and Carry parking lot in Wachula, relief agencies have set up camp. Along with food, they're handing out massive amounts of bottled water. This morning we served over 5,000 meals by 1 o'clock, and we didn't get here until 9.30. 5,000 meals. Did you have any idea that the need would be so great? Never. Never in my wildest imagination. Uh, people were crying just for a bottle of water. Uh, they wanted to give us money that they really didn't have, and we're not taking money. Salvation Army volunteers like Leighton Alston came from as far away as Georgia. That sort of kindness has given strength to Benny Stewart. At 95, she rode out Hurricane Charlie at home for as long as she could. The roof was taken off the home and all connected with it, all in the area. It was just flying through the air. Every home that I could see was destroyed. She spent the last few nights at Wachula Elementary, now a Red Cross shelter. They have done a remarkable job. They are e excellent, everybody. Governor Bush touring the area today promised more help is on the way. The state and the federal government is going to provide uh, resources, the likes of which perhaps communities that have experienced disasters uh, have not experienced in the past. Caravans of power and utility trucks are here too. Restoring electricity is expected to take at least seven days. Until then, many are grateful for the goodwill of others, including Benny Stewart, who plans on staying with her niece until her home is fixed. I know she loves me, and I think I'd have a good time there. I'm 95 years old, you know. And, uh, I would have never guessed that. Yeah, and it's just, uh, it's just fun to be anywhere almost, you know. And we have seen that kind of resilience throughout this community. Resilience and strength, just like Benny. People say they will pull through this. It's just going to take time, weeks, possibly months. They say they will come through, though. And we should also mention that there is still a curfew throughout Hardy County, in part because of this lack of electricity. A curfew in effect from 8 o'clock in the evening until 7 o'clock in the morning. Authorities want to make sure that people stay safe, stay off the roads, and they also want to discourage any possible looting. Looting, which we have not seen here. Again, goodwill coming from so many different places. Like we've talked about so much, neighbors helping neighbors, families helping families, we, as we saw with the woman you just interviewed who is precious and seems to have such a great attitude about it. Absolutely, and her family is here as well. They have pulled together from throughout the state to help her, just as families throughout this community have pulled together for one another and for their neighbors positive part of what what we're seeing it's been very yes. difficult but that's just a bright spot for sure an order from the governor is first on fox right now good evening i'm frank robertson i'm cynthia smoot governor bush says no matter how bad the destruction from hurricane charlie he wants all counties back to school no later than august 30th now most bay area counties will make that deadline but it's not going to be easy Fox 13's Doug Smith it joins us live now from Bowling Green in Hardy County. That was one of the counties really hit hard, Doug. Yeah, Cynthia, it sure was. The, they will need about uh, a 36 portables here in this county. That's about a third of what they need throughout the state. We're at Bowling Green Elementary. Take a look around. This is a week after the storm. Still a lot of work to be done here. Today, Governor Bush toured this school. He also toured several others. And the people here were happy to see him because when you look around, this school needs a lot of help. Mrs. Waters' kindergarten class has a new skylight where the water just pours right in. A week after the storm, a giant oak is all that's sitting in her class. Number 102 will be moved to a portable when students return. Bowling Green Elementary will need a dozen portables. Statewide Governor Bush, who toured schools on Friday, said about 100 portables will be needed to get all schools up and running by the end of the month. 
you're not fully recovered until kids are going to school. I mean, that that is got to be a defining moment for our state. Hurricane Charlie caused far more damage to schools than did Hurricane Andrew. Yet students will return to school three weeks earlier than they did back in 1992. We've learned a lot from Andrew and we're better organized and so we have high expectations and it's difficult enough for moms to rebuild their own lives and their and moms and dads in their houses and then have kids that that aren't going to school and the teachers want to get back in school teachers like renee heathrow but she knows it will take a little time for a permanent solution it's almost like from the outside look like scissors just cut it it's going to take a, a little bit to get back to uh, normal around here this one will be out for quite a while this one will probably have the portable that Governor Bush was talking about. The superintendent of schools for Hardy County says help pouring in from places like the Bay Area have made a huge difference. We are, uh, it, it really does kind of choke me up a little bit. The response from the Hillsborough County School District has been beyond outstanding. They sent 20 trucks up here the day after the storm. 75 workers, they have been here working, trying to get this job done ever since. And it's a big job. I'm in the courtyard of the school here. As I walk out, you see this is the insulation from the roof, and it, it almost looks like somebody maybe teepeed the fence. And then this is what happened after a rain. Uh, this is obviously the least of their concern out here. The governor did tour other schools besides here in Hardy County. He went to Kissimmee, which is near Orlando, and also down in Charlotte County to assess the damage that has been caused to the schools. His priority is to, to have all the kids back in classes by the end of the month. Sure does look like a daunting task, no doubt about it. Thanks, Doug. Well, here, here's what we know about when schools are back in session. Students in Highlands and Polk County, they're scheduled to go back this Monday. That's August 23rd. Mayaka City Elementary School in Manatee County, it will also reopen Monday. If necessary, it can still be used as a shelter in the evening, though. Now, public schools in Hardy, DeSoto, and Charlotte County, they do need more time, as you just saw in Hardy. They're going to open a week later on the governor's deadline. That is Monday, August 30th. President In Hardy County returned to their classrooms for the first time since Hurricane Charlie shut down school. They're working to get things ready for their students to return to class on Monday. The storm caused about $20 million worth of damage to the schools, but administrators say they will carry on and try to be positive. Things aren't going to be like they were when they left us 13 days ago, but it'll be doable and we'll make the best of a difficult situation. Structural engineers have inspected each classroom in the county. Some Hardy students will be moved to portables until unsafe classrooms are rebuilt. And classes also resume Monday in DeSoto. Are slowly returning to normal for hurricane survivors in Hardy County. But 70 people are still living in shelters in Wachula. As Fox 13's Giselle Guerra reports, they'll have to move again soon. Hardy County is still bad, but getting better. We're stable. And those are good words, considering. By the numbers, Charlie damaged or destroyed three out of four homes in Hardy. Teams are still serving up 10,000 meals a day, but one tiny setback. The shelter in Wachula had to move. There are some cramped quarters. To a smaller space. So there's just such a lack of shelter here, and things are looking up. I mean, we just take every day gets a little better. And shelter manager Cynthia Kendall says it's taught her a little lesson about life. Human spirit prevails, um, but you can get a lot of uh, different cultures and races together and everyone can coexist. Kendall says they're trying to cycle people out of that shelter fast. Temporary housing is moving in and it's the little things keeping them afloat. I'm grateful for food, grateful for a shower, grateful for a restroom. Um, grateful for each other. That the people working the aftermath need each other too. On, mate, Dinner time at the table. Division of Forestry Command Post. They say storm cleanup is looking good. We're right now at the plateau. You know, we're looking out a couple days to start ramping down, start demoving some people from the incident. Not only is this chow hall kind of a decompression chamber for these crews, but it also gives them a chance to talk about the day and actually plan the days ahead. Well, we think out 24, 48 hours in advance. What's happening right now? Where, where are we going to be tomorrow? Where are we going to be two days from now?
Democrats. By Monday, the ESC should be back to normal operations. The director there says he's impressed with the support they've gotten. You know, that light at the end of the tunnel is not a train coming. It is truly the light. And just maybe, it's the power after the storm of people working together, which may be Charlie's legacy. In Wachula, Giselle Guerra, Fox 13 News. Teachers in Hardy County are working to clean things up for the first day of school since Hurricane Charlie. Students head back to class on Monday. Damage to Hardy schools from the storm is estimated at $20 million. The county says each classroom has been inspected. Some students will be moved into portables until the damaged classrooms are rebuilt. Contractors are in high demand in areas affected by the Hurricane Charlie, but there is a shortage of licensed laborers in the state, and so the Florida Home Builders Association Association is asking the state to allow contractors from other states to help out. They don't want homeowners to become victims of unlicensed contractors. Governor Jeb Bush says he's considering giving out-of-state contractors temporary licenses. The governor already issued an executive order allowing state licensed general contractors to do roofing work in nine counties hit by the storm. Now for the latest on Charlie's aftermath. About 57,000 customers are still without power. Most are customers of Florida Power and Light. Many Charlotte County residents won't get the lights back on until Sunday. The Peace River Electric Cooperative says it has power back to 86% of its customers, but some areas of Hardy County will be out until next week. And the Red Cross estimates relief efforts will top $50 million. The group has already served more than a million meals. It plans to launch a nationwide fundraising campaign to pay for everything. A massive cleanup is taking place in Hardy County to get ready for the reopening of the schools on Monday. Teachers came back to their classrooms for the first time today since Charlie slammed the area. Fox 13's Ken Suarez joins us live now from Bowling Green Elementary, one of the hardest hit schools. Ken? I think it's real safe to say, Frank, that there's lots of challenges, not only at this school, but at other ones as well. Take a look at this. You're going to see a lot of this going on. Keep out unsafe. That's because this building has been condemned. Why don't we walk up the stairs, and I will show you why. This used to be the reading room. If you take a look right down there, you're going to see that it is trashed. Water all over the floor, insulation, and that is the reason why a tree came right through the roof. Now it's going to have to be knocked down and rebuilt. Teachers can't do this kind of thing, but they have been making a very good effort to try and do what they can. But despite their best efforts, life around here is not going to be anything close to normal. At Bowling Green Elementary, teachers came back to a very different school from the one they left. Roofs are now gone. Six classrooms condemned. They hauled, cleaned, and sweat to get ready for Monday. 5,000 kids will be coming back for the first time since Charlie blew through. We have had structural engineers go through every building in this school district. We would not certainly put children in an unsafe condition. The hurricane caused at least $20 million in damage to Hardy County's six schools. Things aren't going to be like they were when they left us 13 days ago, but it'll be doable and we'll make the best of a difficult situation. At Bowling Green, eight portables are expected to arrive in the next few weeks. Until then, classes will be moved to the library or just about anywhere there's space. We're not so much concerned with educating them right away, but we are real concerned with helping take care of them. At this luncheon, Hardy's superintendent gave a pep talk to hundreds of employees who have a tough road ahead. He told them even though schools were trashed by the storm, they offer something that many kids and teachers may not have at home. Food, power, and air conditioning. The heat gets to you after a while. Uh, you don't rest well. You get real tired. Everyone here faces months of coping and compromising. Brushes everywhere. Um, we also have low-hanging limbs out in the country road still that aren't ready. So we're going to have to find ways to get those kids picked up and get them to school. Along with patching the school's bricks and mortar, teachers will have to rebuild something else. The kids' sense of security, which is badly shaken after something like this. I'm going to hug them and just be there to listen to them. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, the school system is going to do something as well. They're going to bring in counselors, not only for teachers, but for kids on Monday. And when you look at something like this, you can certainly understand why. Back to you, Frank. And Ken, a lot of work to do in getting that building back in shape. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Kathy? First on Fox right now, it's back to school again in Hardy County. Fox 13's Imani Channel shows us how teachers are preparing for students to return to class after Hurricane Charlie. 
a lot of people have asked why are we starting already our schools really don't feel like they're ready but our students need to come Kathy Walker has gathered these supplies in her classroom and she has more than just pens and paper she's also collected clothes shoes even undergarments we're just ready for whatever if they need clothing we have it if they need supplies we have that I'm ready to get back I'm ready to get back to some kind of normal so you know we had only had four days in school as it was and so it's like starting over school all over again plus with a lot of different heartaches for the past two weeks Wachula Elementary was one of the main shelters in Hardy County students returned Monday morning Hurricane Charlie did more than 22 million dollars in damage to schools in Hardy most classrooms are ready, a few aren't. To get back to a routine, to have a safe building, I don't know what they're dealing with at home, what their homes look like. Um, we just are, are ready for them. We're here emotionally. We want to first take care of their physical and emotional needs, and then we'll work on the academic. Jan Sleeper's kindergarten class will have to share a room with another class until her room is finished. She sees it as an advantage. As they're going to hear more stories. We're going to share our hurricane stories, and they'll learn that more children the same age are dealing with the same things. They say there's so much they need to learn from each other while they work to heal together. Amani Channel, Fox 13 News. School officials don't really know how many students will return today. Some families have actually moved away from the county. Crisis counselors will be available to help students deal with any issues that they might have. Charlotte and DeSoto County schools are also back today for the first time since Charlie. The Republican.